What's going on guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today We are opening up a pack of return to Ravnica. This is the original return to Ravnica Not the Ravnica that we are on now. How many times can I say Ravnica in the beginning of this episode? Uh, anyway, I really liked this set. This was actually when I got back into magic my first time uh, It was on the return to Ravnica set. So I'm really really excited to be opening it uh, We will of course look at this from a draft perspective So we'll do the best we can to figure out what our pack one pick one would actually be uh, I did get a little bit of a chance to draft with this set during that time, though I didn't draft all the time by any means. So uh, we'll do the best we can to figure out what our pack one pick one will be. Uh, and our first card here is Deviant Glee. So it's an enchant creature for one black. The enchanted creature gets plus two, plus one, and has pay one red. This creature gains trample until end of turn. There was actually at this time a constructed deck that was based around this and just a bunch of red black aggro stuff. Really, really sweet deck. Very, very powerful. Definitely kind of won out uh, some FNMs just here and there uh, for being super, super aggressive. Uh, this is one of the key cards for it, uh, as well as Madcap skills. Uh, and so I really like this card, surprisingly. Uh, I really don't like enchant creatures, but this is such a low cost one. It really isn't that impactful if you lose it. Uh, not to mention, it is a big buff for only one mana. Uh, so I do like this card. I don't think I would like first pick this by any means. Uh, I would rather have some like aggressive creatures first. Uh, but this is definitely a solid card. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Armory Guard is a 2-5 for 3 and a white. It has Vigilance as long as you control a gate. Uh, gates are obviously very prevalent in this set. I believe there are five of them in this one. Uh, and so it's very, very easy to pick up gates uh, to the mid to late pack if you're drafting. Uh, so cards like this, there you'll probably see a couple of them. Uh, they get a buff from, from having a gate out. Uh, I don't really like this card, to be honest. A 2-5 for 4, uh, even with Vigilance, just doesn't seem like it's all that good to me. So would probably pass it. Uh, Urban Bur Burgeoning? Burgeoning? I, I don't know how to pronounce that because I say things wrong. Uh, Enchant land for one green. It has uh, untap this land during each other player's untap step. So it's a really unique ability being able to untap lands on the opponent's turn. Uh, it's something that we see is very, very overpowered in things like commander when you can just do crazy stuff. However, doing that only one land at a time for one mana, it just doesn't seem very good. Uh, so honestly, in limited, this just seems like a really bad card to me. Uh, Inspiration is a very classic card. Instant uh, for three and a blue. Target player draws two cards. So pretty straightforward, but uh, very, very good. So drawing two cards at instant speed for four mana in limited, pretty solid. Uh, the downside here is that card draw in limited isn't quite as good as a lot of people think. It is definitely good. Don't get me wrong. You want it if you're in blue. Uh, but it's not necessarily like at the top of the list of priorities. If you have one or two draw spells, it's great, uh, but it's not at the top of the list. I will say over any of the other cards that we've got in the pack, I would probably take this though. Uh, the Sol Soul is a 2-2 two -two for one and then two hybrid mana of either white or blue and it just has flying. It's a pretty straightforward card. Uh, there's actually nothing wrong with this. This is just kind of an on par creature. Uh, a 2-2 two -two with flying for three seems pretty solid. I like that it's hybrid mana so it doesn't necessarily need both colors of mana. Uh, so if you're somehow ending up in a mono blue or mono white deck, which would not happen in this set, uh, but realistically if you happen to do that, uh, then you can get away with playing this regardless uh, instead of just be too white instead of a blue and a white or two blue. So I like the flexibility there. Uh, the art's really fantastic as well, but uh, not super exciting to be honest. <clears throat> uh, Sundering Growth is an instant for two hybrid mana of either green or white. Destroy target artifact or enchantment and then you populate. Populate uh, was unique to this set. You put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of a creature token that you already control. So uh, essentially this spits out another token if you've already got one and it destroys an artifact or an enchantment. That's a lot of stuff for two mana, uh, especially at instant speed. That is really, really powerful. And unfortunately in draft, obviously artifacts and enchantments are a little bit harder to come by, so it may not be really worth it to run this main board. Uh, but that being said, this is prime, prime sideboard uh, for a Selesnya Tokens deck. You definitely will want something like this just to be able to deal with those corner cases where you have an artifact or an enchantment that's a little bit of a problem. So I really like this card, but it is kind of resigned to the sideboard, unfortunately. 
Uh, Annihilating Fire is an instant for one and two red. It deals three damage to target creature or player. If a creature dealt damage this way would die, you exile it instead of putting it into the graveyard. This is just great efficient removal. Instant speed, three damage for three mana. Sounds great to me. Sign me up. Exile the creature. If it dies, it's perfect. So uh, this is definitely so far going to be the pick. This is a really, really solid removal spell. Uh, Dead Reveler is a 2-3 two, for 2 and a black. It does have Unleash, so Unleash is unique to this set as well. Uh, you can have this creature enter the battlefield with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. It can't block, though, as long as it has that 1-1 one, one counter. So, uh, just to be clear, any 1-1 one, one counter on this, any plus 1, plus 1 counter on this means it cannot block, which is really, really interesting. Uh, but Unleash is a very powerful limited mechanic. It is the Rakdos mechanic. Uh, you'll want to deal a lot of damage very, very early. Cards like this help you do that. So I do like this card, but it is kind of an average three drop uh, for the Rakdos guild. Ideally, uh, you'll probably want maybe one or two of these and it's perfectly fine, uh, but it is just kind of, it, it's just a standard three drop. It's not super, super exciting. Uh, Centaur's Herald is a zero one for one green. You can pay two and a green and sacrifice it to put a 3-3 three, three green centaur creature token onto the battlefield. Uh, this is an interesting card. It's kind of nice just to have a one drop. Uh, and so in a Selesnya deck, to be able to do that is probably okay. But it's really not that powerful. For three mana, you're sacrificing a creature to get a 3-3. Three, three. So it's like, you could just get a 3-3. Three, three. Um, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem all that exciting to me. Uh, I didn't really play with this card. I feel like it's a little bad. Uh, Stealer of Secrets is a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a blue. When it deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. So this is a really, really powerful ability. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to actually make work. Uh, obviously, there are cards that help you do that. I believe Rogue's Passage is in this set, uh, so you can make this creature unblockable. If I remember correctly, I might be wrong, uh, which is a really nice little combo. Just being able to swing in for two damage, make it unblockable, draw a card off of it. That's a lot of advantage after one little swing. So I really, really like that, but uh, it is a little bit difficult to make happen. It's a card that you would want probably in a blue deck just for those cases where there's nothing on board. You get a free, a free swing in, <coughs> excuse me, uh, but it is a little bit trickier than it looks. <coughs> Uh, our first uncommon is Soul Tithe, so it's one and a uh, white, excuse me, for an enchant non-land permanent. Uh, at the beginning of the upkeep of the enchanted permanents controller, that player sacrifices it unless he or she pays X, where X is its converted mana cost. Uh, this is a really roundabout way to say, like, either you have to pay a lot of mana or you sacrifice a thing. Uh, it gives your opponent the choice. Generally speaking, I don't like giving the opponent a choice. Yes, they're both bad, but they're gonna play the one that makes the most sense to them. So like, if they've got a bigger bomb, they're just gonna let that one die and then play this, or uh, and play the other bombs. So like, doesn't really make that much sense to me. It's an okay card, I'm sure, but like, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, Rites of Reaping is four of black and a green for a sorcery. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn, and then another target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. Uh, this is a really powerful ability for sure. Six mana seems like a bit much to me, uh, but being able to really buff one of your creatures and then hopefully take out one of theirs is fantastic. So I do like that. Uh, I don't know if this is better than Annihilating uh, Fire, to be honest. I feel like Annihilating Fire is just way more efficient and I'd rather be efficient and limited. Uh, this is definitely a game changer uh, for sure, but... Um, I don't know. I think I'd rather have Annihilating Fire, to be honest. Uh, Syncopate is X and a blue for an instant. Counter target spell unless this controller pays X. Uh, if that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. Classic counter spell. It's something you want. It's scalable. Uh, I really, really like that. It, I, I like that it also exiles because scavenge is a thing in this. If you're against Golgari, that could be an issue. Uh, and so I do like this card. It's definitely something I'd want in a blue deck. Not more than an Annihilating Fire, to be honest. Uh, annihilating Fire is just too efficient. <clears throat> and then our rare is Death's Presence. So it's an enchantment for five and a green. Whenever a creature you control dies, uh, you put X 1-1 one, one counters on target creature you control where X is the power of the creature that died. Very powerful ability for sure. Very not that good in draft. Uh, unfortunately, at six mana, you just want to be doing more. Uh, you don't want to be setting up at six. Uh, you really want to be winning the game at six. And so a card like this, while 
it definitely is powerful and it's definitely going to hopefully do a lot. Uh, at turn six, it probably is just going to be outpowered if you don't have another creature on the board. So I'm not a huge fan of this card, uh, at least in limited. I think, uh, honestly, this the, the home for this card is commander, uh, where you can ramp it out really, really quickly and then really capitalize on it. Uh, unfortunately, that does not happen in limited, so not a fan of that. Uh, for me, I think it's a pretty easy Annihilating Fire. The only other card that I would consider is the Rites of Reaping, uh, which is a powerful card for sure, uh, but I do think the efficiency of Annihilating Fire just wins it out for me. So. Let me know in the comment section if you disagree, of course, uh, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.